Doc, please, 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 I need vitamins for my brain. It's one of the things that I hear the most every single day seeing patients here in my office. Every single day patients come and say, please, doctor, give me vitamins for my brain because I need vitamins. We think that the people that are healthier are the ones that take more vitamins. And that's not true. That's not necessarily true. Because if you have a very rich diet, if you eat a lot of full, rich diet rich in absolutely healthy foods. You don't need anything at all most of the time. And I say most of the time because there are certain occasions in which we might need for a therapeutic reason a specific vitamin and that could be true. That could be very necessary. But not just because someone is taking a lot of vitamins it's going to mean that they're going to be healthier. And in this video we're going to talk about all of those vitamins and which are the specific functions for the brain and which are the foods in which you are going to find them. First, we need to remember something. There are two groups of vitamins. So we have hydrosoluble vitamins, which are, again, vitamins soluble in water, and vitamins that are soluble in lipids, so or lipid-soluble vitamins. So on hydrosoluble vitamins, we're going to have all the B complex and vitamin C. And the other ones, the ones that are soluble in lipids, are going to be vitamin A, D, E, and K. So those are the two divisions and we're going to be talking about first of the vitamins that are soluble in water. So the first one is going to be vitamin B1 or also called thiamine. Thiamine is very important for the brain because it helps the brain to have a better consumption of glucose. And you might not think of this in the brain. It's an organ that just weighing two kilograms consumes around 20% of all the glucose that we have in the body. So per centimeter of tissue, the brain is the organ that consumes more energy in the whole brain, more glucose in the whole brain. And thiamine is going to be very necessary for the consumption of glucose and the production of energy. Where do we find thiamine? We're going to find them in whole grains. We're going to find it in legumes and in nuts. Number two is going to be vitamin B6 or also called pyridoxine. Pyridoxine is going to be necessary for the production of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, such as dopamine, and such as noradrenaline. Let's remember that serotonin brings us all the states when you're calm, when you're zen, when you love, when you want to share things, when you want to share something with a lot of people, when you want to be connected with other people. Dopamine, on the other hand, is something that it's, a stimu it's stimulated when you're winning things, when all the notifications, when you're silver, gold, diamond, when you're getting more things. And that's why when you when we get excess of dopamine, the excess of, of dopamine could be something that we don't want because maybe it could turn into an addiction. But dopamine is very, very necessary, for example, for getting good habits in our body. Where are we gonna find in plantains, chicken, fish, potatoes, avocados and nuts. Number three is going to be vitamin B9 or folic acid or the biochemical form in which we're going to find it that it works better that is called folate. Folate is very important for two things in the body and especially in the brain. Number one is going to help us with all the repair and all the damage that we can have on our DNA. Whenever a cell is going to get repair or whenever it's going to reproduce or it's going to bring a new cell, they have to bring that information that they have on the DNA, on the, D on the code that we have in inside of the nucleus and it's going to give it to the offspring. Something else, it's a process that is very beautiful in the biochemistry inside the body. It occurs in every single cell of our body. It occurs in processes like detoxification in different organs, like in the liver and the lymphatic system and the kidneys and the intestine, but it's called methylation. Methylation is necessary for every single process. One of them is the production of neurotransmitters. One of them is the detoxification. One of them is the elimination of histamine, for instance. One of them, it's also DNA repair. Where are we going to find it? Leafy greens, legumes, nuts, citric fruits. Number four is going to be vitamin B12 or cobalamin. If you haven't seen the video that we have on vitamin B12, I encourage you to see it and we have it over here. But uh, just to make a little recap, vitamin B12, which is called cobalamin, is very important for the production of red blood cells, but it's also very important for the production or for the maintenance or for, or for the covering or for the protection of the nervous system, even if it's central nervous system or peripheral nervous system, for both. B12, it's involved in the production of, of something called myelin. And you would say, what's that? Whenever we have a neuron, neuron is like a wire that we have, and you've seen that wires, they have like this protection that comes around, like this microphone that I have over here, it has a protection that goes around to be covered. 
That protection in the cell, in the neuron, is called myelin. And myelin, for the, produ for the production of myelin, it's going to be completely necessary to have good levels of vitamin B12. Where are we going to find vitamin B12, especially in all animal foods? And this is something that we need to remember. Animal foods such as dairy, eggs, or just animal meats or organs. There are three ways in which you might find vitamin B12 in the market. There is one that's called, remember that I said cobalamin. So you're going to find the most common ones called cyocobalamin. Cyo, it co comes from cyanide. And the thing is, a lot of people get afraid because it's cyanide and everyone goes like, what? Yeah, but still, you're not getting large amounts of cyanide so you're not going to die from cyanide poisoning from getting vitamin B12. But different from that, there are two forms that work even better. That's called methylcobalamin or adenosylcobalamin. The last one of the high of the water soluble vitamins that I want to talk to you about is vitamin C. Vitamin C is going to be the function that is going to help us in the brain. It's going to be very clear and very easy and it's maybe one of the widest functions of vitamin of vitamin C and it's the power that it has an antioxidant. These were the water soluble vitamins that could be involved for the protection of the brain. Now let's go for for fat soluble vitamins, which are going to be those especially two. Number one is going to be vitamin D. Remember that vitamin D, it's involved in a bunch of different processes for the bones, for glucose, for insulin production, for the immune system for neurodegenerative diseases, for a bunch of things. In this case, vitamin D protects the neuron, protects the regeneration, but also it has been shown in several studies that patients who are deficient in vitamin D tend to have more depression, and patients that are deficient in vitamin D tend to have more progress for neurodegenerative diseases and also with autoimmune neurodegenerative diseases. Sources of vitamin D are going to be especially fatty fish, such as salmon, such as sardines. And most of the people, they don't get enough levels of vitamin D in their diet. So that's why most of the people that need vitamin D, they need to take a supplement of vitamin D. And the last one, it's vitamin E. Vitamin E, it's going to have exactly the same effect that we were talking like vitamin C. It's going to protect the neuron from all the oxidative stress, from all the oxidative damage that could come from free radicals or from oxygen species just going around the bloodstream or in the body. What we need to take into account is that vitamin E, we're going to find it on healthy fats. We're going to find it in legumes. We're going to find it in some nuts, in some citric fruits, and in some vegetables as well. So these are the vitamins that are good for the brain. These are the vitamins that you should be looking for. But again, wait, see if you're consuming the foods that I just told you in your diet. Make your diet something rich, something full, something natural, something that you include. Because when you're taking, I don't know, leafy greens or nuts, you're not just taking folic acid. You're taking a bunch of different nutrients that are inside of them. So when we're eating rich, dense foods in our diet, we're bringing all the different variety of nutrients that we need. And afterwards, when you have a rich nutrient diet, then you see if you need something else. And if you need something else, it could be necessary for some patients when they're insufficient or when they have symptoms of the deficiency or, or, or the insufficiency or of a specific vitamin to bring a supplement into account. It doesn't mean that you need to be taking large amounts of different supplements or that you need to go and look for thiamine, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin, all the different vitamins because you're going to go nuts and you're going to go crazy by getting all these different supplements and... Sometimes people think that it's better to be taking supplements than to be having a rich diet and something that they really understand and something that they can go and take and eat in every single part of the world where or wherever they go, which is, I think it's most important. So if you want to have really a healthy brain, these are the vitamins that you sh should be taking into account. And please remember before you leave that the best way to support us, it's very easy. It's just share the video with your friends. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and please remember that there's a bell button that every time you hit it, that you just have to hit it once. And when you hit it once, every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you. Until next time. Number two is vitamin B6 or pyridoxine.
the crazy street doing them. Vitamins for the brain. Estabas enredada entonces con los trisulfitos. Y que son palabras que no son palabras comunes. 